Welcome back. Today in the Chippewa Spotlight, the Gardner Bender GMT 318 analog multimeter. Yeah, that's right. I said analog because believe it or not, these types of multimeters are still really popular. Bender, a name you've known to trust and grow with. Well, that's what they want you to think anyway. Hey, it's a name that's been around for a long time. That is definitely for sure. Uh, Gardner Bender, I think just about every kid's dad, at least in Canada, had one of these things in his garage. I mean, they were just uber popular and really available just about anywhere. Analog meters are still popular as well. And uh, this GB is no different. In fact, in Amazon, it's got over 2,000 reviews. Uh, that is a lot for an analog meter. Uh, why is it so popular? I mean, what gives people? Well, let's find out. First off, you don't get nothing very uh, extravagant with this package. You get what we call the bare necessities. Strictly test leads and that's it. I mean, you don't even get an instruction manual. Uh, they give you a quick little lowdown on the back, but yeah, I didn't even get instructs with this meter. No, it's as bare bones as bare bones can be. 14 ranges, six functions in total. It does at least do milliamps up to 250, so that's good. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's a basic, basic meter. It has the battery test function, which I think a lot of people who buy this meter will probably be using the most. Now this is definitely a bit smaller than your average style uh, analog multimeter of today. And I mean, by a fair amount, literally half the size of the Pro's kit and uh, you know, two thirds the size of the Hayoki. But that being said, you know, being small isn't always a bad thing. Those included test leads are tiny, but they did pass the pole test. And I mean, all things considered, they're gonna be doing the bare basics anyway. And if you blow your milliamp fuse, fear not, you have easy access with the Gardner Bender. Look at that. There's your 500 milliamp, 250 volt glass fuse right there. As well, here's the well for that 1.5 volt battery. Good stuff. Another decent feature as well is we have an ETL rating Intertech certified safety. That's a good thing. Sadly and unbelievably, we have no tilt stand on the meter itself. No tilt stand, uh, no magnetic backing, nada. Don't know why they do that. Those included test leads fit snug as a bug in a rug. Look at that. Nice and secure. Tight. They're not going anywhere. By the way, awesome. another caveat to having an analog meter is the fact that if you just want to test your batteries, you don't even need to buy a battery. Nada. It will do it. Battery free. First, just make sure you have it in either 1.5 or the 9-volt battery setting. In this case, it's 9-volt because we're testing a 9-volt battery right here. And to test that 9-volt battery doesn't get any easier. Have the selector switch set to the 9-volt position. Test it with the leads, and there we are. Green means good. If it's in the middle on the question mark, throw it away. And obviously, the red, well, you replace it. So, yeah, awesome. Very simple, very functional. Same thing with the 1.5 selector. And I'll show you now what a bad battery is going to look like. And here's another battery. This is another 9 volt. And oopsies, this one is dead. Well, not dead, but it's on the way out. It's telling us to replace it, which is a good idea. So as you can see, battery testing, pretty cool little functionality of this meter. And I dare say a lot of folks picking this up will be using it exclusively for this. And it works. It doesn't do high current, but it does milliamps up to 250 milliamps. So as you can see, we're looking at that top scale here, DC milliamps, and I'm going to bring it up to about 25 milliamps, and it should end up right around there in between the zero and the 50. So let's see what happens. Here we go. And we are fast approaching. We're at 12 milliamps, and yet it is almost center. 24 milliamps, and yes, halfway just a little less than half, but it works. Here's a slightly better overhead shot and you can see 24 milliamps we're sitting at and yeah, pretty well spot on. Good job, Gardner Bender. 120 volts AC, looking good. 
So when you're testing resistance on your analog meter, make sure you measure your resistance, calibrate it, so to speak, before you take your actual measurement. Put the uh, setting to, here we are in times one mode. I'm gonna put the test leads together and we should have that needle come right up to zero over here. And you can see that indeed. Perfect. Try it one more time. Right on that zero setting and that's exactly what you wanna see. If it's not on the zero, on the side of the meter, you have your ohms adjust right here. And that's what you use to actually move the needle, the needle to make sure it is set to zero when you're shorting out the leads. That's it, that's all. All right, let's take a quick resistance test. 100 ohms is what we want. With our precision ohms resistor. And there we are, look at that, 100 ohms. Remember with analog meters, it's all about scaling. And here we are on that scale, 100 ohms right here, spot on. Now we are on the times one range, so it's a true read. I'm gonna put it to times 10, and you can see now we are on the different scale over here, the 100 ohm scale. So depending on your range multiplier, your scale position will change. Okay, here we are on the inside of the Gardner Bender, starting off at the bottom with our inputs. Here is our positive and the negative. We'll flip this over in a second to take a little closer look, but really sparse here as you can see, not much going on. One glass fuse for the milliamp, that's a 500 milliamp fuse. Here is the meter housing itself. And uh, yeah, that's what we've done the flipper. Here we are with those gold-plated selector tracks. Pretty good condition actually. Um, no grease or dielectric on there. And uh, very clean though, no flux, what have you. That's our ohms adjust over oh, here. It's a tiny meter. Let's take a look at those input jacks. And uh, hey, they are in there really, really well. I gotta say, lots of solder, not going anywhere. Gardner Bender did a good job of making sure that uh, those are in there long term. And really good soldering as well. Ohms adjust. And beside it, we actually have a, a VR1 pot to uh, calibrate your voltage. So that is kind of cool. Finally, if we looked at the selector switch itself, it's not of the ball and spring variety. No, it has these plastic uh, arms, if you want, that uh, make contact with the, the wheels themselves. So I don't know in terms of long-term, but uh, they, they generally seem to last uh, uh, just as well as the ball and springs. But other than that, pretty nice, pretty clean. Hey, it's a basic, basic analog meter. You're not gonna expect a whole lot in here. Let's put it back together, come back with my closing thoughts. Closing thoughts on the Gardner Bender, GMT 318, analog cheapo. This is not a bad multimeter, let's face it, it's an analog multimeter. Doesn't do a whole lot, but then again, some people just don't need a meter to do a whole lot. Just the basics, I say, voltage resistance and a little bit of current milliamps. But you know what, at the end of the day, that's all some people need. And I think this is really gonna be used as a battery tester for a lot of people that are actually purchasing the meter. And it does a great job at testing batteries. Now, if all you need is something to throw in the truck or car or camp or what have you, I think this little Gardner Bender could definitely come in handy. Hey, the Gardner Bender GMT 318, the little meter that doesn't do a lot, but what it does, it does it well, relatively well. It's a solid 3.5 out of five stars. Hey, I was surprised with the build quality for this El Cheapo. Not bad at all. Thanks for watching this review, everybody. Till the next one, keep on testing.